It's Hatchpod time. Maya Acosta joined today by Greg Garrett and Corey Costello. And we have a special guest, Richard Chapman, president and CEO of the Kern Economic Development Corporation. Thanks so much right. for coming in. Thanks for having me up here. Beautiful weather. Sorry I missed the Apple Festival. Yeah, next year. It's okay. always next year, right? <laughs> but I think you're a busy man. You've got lots going on. So you get a pass. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> You've got lots going on and something coming up on the horizon is the Kern Energy Summit. So this is an annual event. How many years has this been going on? Um, 18 years. Oh, um, actually, awesome. my first week on the job uh, was the energy, the inaugural energy summit. And our keynote speaker was... Uh, Ed Bagley Jr., if you remember him. Oh, I remember that. Wow. So you must have a really good team that surrounds you. Yes, I just got on stage. There you go. Uh Um, But we did, you know, we went from about 100 to 200 people to over 400. So my understanding is the largest energy summit on the West Coast. So we're really proud of uh, this annual uh, event that that, uh, showcases our incredible energy diversity. And you should be. It sells out every year, correct? Yes, the last few years. And so this year it's October 24th at the Bakersfield Marriott at the Convention Center over on Truxton. So we look forward. I know Tajby is going to have a contingent. Thank you for your sponsorship. Too. You're welcome. Very excited. Yeah, and we have you know renewables and all kinds of different things, oil and gas, of course. But uh, we support all the industries, and so we're here to support Kern County in any way we can. It's about the energy evolution, right? Those energy words that evolution. we use. <laughs> okay, yeah. is that the theme this year? Um, well, yeah, as, as we've used the background theme is really about powering California's future in terms of the energy, what we do for the state. We're, you know, number one oil and, you know, and gas county in, in the state, 15th nationally. We can chat about that ranking. And then we are the number one renewable energy county in the country. I know there are a lot of details behind energy, energy production, energy, um, you know, delivery and those sorts of things. And we had interviewed Congressman uh, Vince Fong earlier and not to be naive, of course, but you you uh, there's lots going on to energy, but you need energy to make the world go round. Yeah. Right. Uh, and a balanced portfolio is the key. And I don't know why the state of California has made it overcomplicated. Right. Energy independence growing up. In the 80s, every it was not political. We all believed that we should have the uh, you know local production, yeah. right? Why should we depend it, be dependent on other countries? Um, and there's that economic security that goes along with energy independence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think Greg, as you're saying, just as despite how difficult the state is making things out to be for these energy production companies, there still are so many new industries and organizations that are coming to Kern County and and will be featured at the summit and share the new exciting technologies and processes that they are bringing to the industry as a whole. Can you tell us a little bit about what right. we can expect? I mean, we are an incubator. Think about the incubator for the energy of the future that's happening in Kern County. So what you're going to see is this wonderful morning of collaboration, right? All types of energy working together, public, private sector, um, Actually, you'll have a significant discussion on carbon capture and sequestration. And the keynote conversation we call at the end will be uh, Lorelai Oviat will be um, have a fireside chat. Um, of course, Lorelai Oviat, uh, planning uh, director of, um, of community, uh, natural resources um, with the county. And uh, she'll be interviewing uh, Francisco Le- Leon, who's the president and CEO of the CRC. And then Alan Pitts, vice president of Chevron San Joaquin Valley uh, unit. So the, the main thrust of this is, well, hey, we've brought people in from outside to talk about energy, uh, diversity, independence. But why not have the leading companies, uh, some of the leading companies in, in the region, if not state, country talking about uh, the future of energy and in, in Kern County. So, Will you be recording this? I don't want to jump way ahead, but recording it so that people can watch it later. Maybe yes. I'm hint, hint state of California. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We would love if folks, uh, many um, representatives from Sacramento did attend, but uh, we will, Uh, have that uh, yes there will be videos that will be pushed out separate actually will segment the various presentations and then i think locally i think the residents of kern county in this region need to maybe understand better how energy is produced and delivered like i said earlier and how it matters to the economy of kern and beyond right i mean without kern county you know where we're 70 percent right of the state's renewable energy uh by one factor six or or, sorry 70 percent oil and gas for the state's 60% 60% renewable energy. So what happened if, if Kern County wasn't 
able to permit these working with CEQA, we set the bar pretty high. We have the gold standard. Uh, and again, uh, actually early in the week, you'll have uh, a CCNS project moving through uh, f- for uh, you know, t- uh, pending board approval on the tw- um, Monday right before the energy summit. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. The terror stuff. vault, right. I wonder too, if we, we talk about the, the being energy efficient and what that used to mean and what it sort of doesn't mean anymore. I just kind of wonder how the, the global happenings start, start bringing that conversation up again. Um, you know, I saw something the other day where some of the countries we're importing from, they're actually getting their oil stolen uh, okay. off pipelines, put in these plastic bags. So there's really no other way to put it. And then that oil is being sold on a black market and then being, and then funding terrorist organizations. I mean, it's just, and these are the companies we're impo- or these countries we're importing from because right. we're not allowing it. So I just wonder as things happen globally, will that conversation come back up? And then is it however too far gone here to be energy independent? Cause we've shuttered so many refineries and, you know, go, go on down the list. Well, you hit on it. It's the supply and demand. Well, we know, demand has increased the last three years. However, our supply has shifted to primarily California to primarily uh, for foreign countries. And I look, looking at the first six months of this year, we, we had a record, not one to be proud of, but over 60% of our um, supply now to California comes from foreign countries. So the demand is not going down. Right. We're just shifting on where we receive or purchase our oil from. Yes. So, for instance, you have uh, countries like Ecuador, Brazil, Saudi Arabia, and Iraq, Guyana. And I, 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 anybody, I would love folks to do the deep dive. It actually doesn't take more than a few minutes. Look at the human rights records and environmental rights records of these countries that we're now getting our oil from versus our uh, look at California's human rights and environmental rights record, probably much greater than even the United States. So why are we preferring uh, demanding oil from these countries versus local production. We have billions of barrels actually in in uh, California ready to be tapped. And there was a story, uh, a study put out the other, a couple weeks back. It was a global projection of, mm-hmm. of, of fossil fuel usage for the next 20 years. And there's no decline in fossil fuel usage until probably like 2040, 2045. Right. Be, not necessarily, and they, and they did factor in, look, yes, some vehicles are switching away from fossil fuels. However, advanced manufacturing, right. manufacturing in general, still all requires fossil fuels. And so as those sectors expand, Expand, the demand for oil is going to be just as high as it's ever been. And they really didn't see any decline until about 2045 on the global usage of, of oil. Well, as you hit on it. Petroleum is not just used in vehicles, right? It's used in look, wind turbines, solar yes. panels, uh, medical devices. And so f- people need to realize that, uh, that uh, demand will continue to increase. And again, we have the strictest regs uh, in the world to dr- drill in Kern County. So why wouldn't, why wouldn't, why would that be political? It just seems like, you know, on one hand, we're highly hypocritical. And on the other hand, we're not using any common sense. And, you know, I think just moving forward to get the working collaboratively, which seems to gone out the window several years ago. I'm not sure why, but uh, it seems like there could be a better balance than there is now. Well, we talk about balance, right? Because we are not paying lip service to the renewable energy side. We have, what, 20,000 megawatts, both in the ground or permitted. And so that's far and away uh, top in the country. Mm -hmm. So we embrace, right, good energy jobs. Mm -hmm. But, um, why you know, oil and gas, we know, look at the data. I mean, 17 out of the top 20 taxpayers in this county are energy companies, oil and gas companies. So why, what happens when that does go away? Uh, is there a replacement? And it's hard to find, uh, you know, uh, jobs that pay almost a hundred thousand dollars, maybe a high school degree, two year degree. Mm-hmm. Um, that is, I guess, the uh, what what uh, f- folks are many demanding for. But we're very grateful that we have have these uh, the oil and gas industry. The beautiful part about Kern County too is the ability to kind of diversify that portfolio. Uh, I know a couple years back at the Energy Summit, I think it was uh, Taft Mayor Dave Knorr who pointed out, he's an oil guy, but he said, look, we all need each other. 
And oils, as oil maybe slowly transitions, it's a slow transition. It's not just stop production today right. and right. everything's going to be electric and powered. We all need each other. And so I think we've definitely, as a county in the area, because of the resources we have, have been able to pivot and figure out new technologies. And wind's been around for a long time. Right. Solar's finally you know, building up to a larger scale. But you've got the carbon capture you pointed out on the west side of the county. And then you look on the east side and we've got projects like Hydro Store that are you know working through the, uh, the, the energy commission to get permitted and another way to and i think you might have brought something up similar uh four or five years ago to energy summit about a, a potential hydrogen project yeah. and now here is yeah. one coming in a, a multinational company that says hey east kern is where we want to drill this big hole basically and and turn that stuff into power and store energy for the future right and they'll be showcased at the event to hydro store it's a 1.5 billion dollar project and and there will be a couple of years of what 700 jobs and then when it's completed, uh, I believe, what, what 25 to 50 mm-hmm. full-time jobs. But also in terms of the tax revenue, that's the thing about oil and gas. What are the industries that come in, have significant capital investment, but also, uh, you know, there is a significant amount going to fund roads and yeah. education and like. We have Pacific Steel, um, almost a net zero project in Mojave. Uh, that should break ground uh, this year. And then we have uh, in Mojave, the world's largest, uh, well, in Mojave, one of the world's largest battery energy uh, solar s- storage systems. Terragen has the largest um, down the road. So you got AES, you got Terragen, all in Kern County. And, and, and what it takes, it only takes the one to start. I mean, the wind right. industry is a perfect example. Somebody in the 1970s, you know, had this crazy idea to throw these turbines on this yep. very windy pass. Right. And look what that turned into, right? It just took one. Same with solar. It just took one to build that, that facility in East Kern and everyone else realized, oh yeah, we have an abundance of land and sun out here. Great opportunity. I think probably the same thing is going to hold true with the hydrogen projects. I think because of just the geography of the area, uh, it's very favorable to these types of projects. And I think if one comes in and is successful, you will probably see others follow suit. And that's just, that's energy as a whole, right? One guy hits oil, everybody else (laughs) goes and drills for oil. That evolution. So I think you'll see that evolution Mm -hmm. continue to expand on the renewable side in conjunction with the continued production of oil and gas. You need to nurture yeah. those those industries it's just like the aerospace industry mojave spaceport under dan sabovich's leadership mm-hmm. back in the day in the 70s you know it just took one and now look what's what's going on 100 companies you know it's you need employees. to nurture all of the industries and and support them so that there is a good balance. Right, and I would say these are all STEM jobs, great STEM jobs that maybe they you have PhDs, but you also have high school grads, you have two to four year, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, in terms of that uh, post-secondary education as well. Mm-hmm. So back to the agenda mm-hmm. yeah. for the Kern Energy Summit, Maya. So we have, obviously, Richard, you're mm-hmm. gonna opening remarks. We talked about Lorelei Olviat. She's the director of, of Kern County Planning and Natural Resources, fireside chat with CRC. But then we move on to the renewable energy projects in the Kern area. So let's talk about that that makeup, that that group of people and what they're going to be talking about. Right. We um, we have it, 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 exciting uh, a blend of uh, technologies and projects. Um, Renew, Newell, if you know, that they're out. Actually, they moved from Texas to uh, Kern County and they actually idle wells. They create energy storage mm-hmm. within these wells. Mm-hmm. So again, that's part of part of this, uh, this collaboration, panel? right? Okay. okay. Right? Um, and so that's a, a, very, a very a small startup company. Of course, Hydro Stores uh, back again to give an update as they move. Uh, there is the hope that that project will break ground uh, next year, maybe first or second quarter. That's in the Rosemont area. We have uh, SoCal Gas. Uh, talking, uh, they have the Angeles link uh, in terms of hydrogen, that project, and as it impacts, um, you know, Kern County, and then uh, Kern Energy, which celebrates their 90th anniversary this year, uh, talking about renewable natural gas. So all types of energy in the renewable energy realm, uh, that will be that that will be a morning discussion. That's awesome. And then a little after that, the energy. Industry Interactive Presentation. What is that? Right. That's the uh, uh, very um, highly acclaimed uh, with Menometer. So there are prizes, um, and there, <laughs> we are asking questions about what the audience knows. Oh, about. it's the game yeah, where you have game. to play quick. You have to answer correctly. Yes. That's and another way of quickly. saying it, the game. The game. With yeah. you have little cute icons. People, I'm not allowed to uh, participate because I know the answers. To Last the year, I actually got on the board, but then okay. towards the end, I dropped right <laughs> off. You <Yeah>. know. <laughs> I think there was a question about the allowed height of the turbine, right? 
yeah, for I'm the wind sure. turbine. So and, what are the questions this year? Uh, well, we'll be working on those. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe, maybe these uh, these energy impact sheets might be cheat sheets. For that. Oh, I'm just thinking. Maybe. Yes. Yeah. 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 Read the market overview. Uh, there you go. I mean, there'll be, there'll be, of course, all types of energy. Um, and so that's exciting that a lot of enthusiasm for that. Um, and then we have a new, uh, new uh, conversation. Um, actually, uh, kudos to Jim Damien, uh, county's uh, chief economic developer officer, said, what about this topic? And uh, we're and Corey and, you know, the city has been uh, saying, how do we, you know, we want to be uh, what we bring to the tables, I think, um, deserves, the, you know, that uh, part of that uh, conver- uh, part of, you know, recognition. So, uh, Corey, w- w- tell me about uh, uh, that panel discussion since uh, you're you're one of the esteemed uh, <laughs> Yeah, esteemed is a, is a very uh, <laughs> generous word. The pressure's, for sure. the pressure's on now. <laughs> so really, to perform. you know, when it comes to um, when it comes to AI and, the, and the, this segment is AI energi- energizers powering the future. Uh, really, the basis is centered around solving problems with AI, um, which we've done in the city on a variety of, of areas now, really kind of started in economic development. And I always say you can use your AI information for offense or defense. Right, right. And, and this one really kind of stemmed from kind of a defensive position where uh, there were some g- statements made or one statement made at a, at a uh, candidate forum for District 2 supervisor where someone said, well, the renewable energy doesn't do much here in East Kern and I'm going to bring real economic impact. And it couldn't have been more ignorant. And, and, and so I thought, well... I can disprove that with AI. It's very easy to do. Uh, and so one of the problems that I'm kind of discussing is the conversation I've had with various renewable companies mm-hmm. around the area. Um, hey, what do you guys, you know, what's your workforce like? Um, what's your traveling workforce like? You know, we, we've pulled up numbers and data to see the, the non-resident uh, folks coming to our hotels. Mm-hmm. Well, there's each company on average is bringing in 20 people a month for something or the other, whether they're an auditor, they're a right, contractor. Right. Then they have contracts with companies in the city, your Vestas, your Pierce Renewables here in the city limits that are doing maintenance work on these projects uh, in East Kern and in the Mojave area. So to really, so, and, and you can quantify some of that uh, from a direct impact and that's just on what they're spending at a hotel for a hotel room. But then we look at like, they're all given a hundred dollars a day or whatever it is in per diem. They're spending that at a local restaurant who then turns around and pays their employee who then comes around and spends that money. So the impact is, is huge there. And there's a few other examples uh, as far as problem solving with AI uh, that we'll be, we'll be sharing. And some of the other panelists have some pretty good uh, versions as well. Well, I know you've been on the task being a, uh, Kudos to the city on the on leading edge of, of of that granular type data uh, with was it placer AI yeah, mm-hmm. and showing the, the money that comes into the county and this region and then you know those folks that's uh, new money because they don't live here but yeah. they spend money that's so important uh, as we look at industries and engage the multiplier effect um, and uh, you know understanding it's not just on site jobs but yeah. as money spent at restaurants and uh, et cetera. And there's a lot of efficiencies too. And I'm sure the the folks I know uh, AES is also on the panel is going to be talking about their, their robot that basically puts in the panels based on the best, you know, alignment with the sun and, and all that. And then even that technologies, you know, they're basing that out of Mojave. And so someone's right. going to have, there's so a human behind that to program and maintain. And, you know, those folks most likely are living in, in the Tatchby area, but just using some of the, the AI for efficiencies, we've used it in the past on designing, projects um and i'll show the example but we've uh, when we when chipotle was built mm-hmm. next to starbucks here in tachibi um there was a problem in that parking lot with just flow and uh, we were able to use an in-center heat map to see the pinch points and with uh with the developers part of the condition of the project moved a couple trash enclosures around wow. which which eliminated some of the pitch points and now there is no issues in that parking lot because we're able to kind of see the path of vehicle travel uh and then make an adjustment so we've been able to do that and then apart from that We've got, gosh, we've got sprinkler folks and landscape folks that are using AI to, to make our water usage more efficient. And the police have some tools they're using now as well. So um, there's a lot of efficiencies that are can built in by understanding the data. And then again, you know, letting AI kind of do the complicated math that I certainly can't do and uh, and come up with results in your best practice. Well, we've used water. AI yeah. in yeah. our, Corey mentioned water. We've saved 27 mm-hmm. acre feet last year with AI data alone mm-hmm. in the city of Tatchby. And we're a small city and 27 acre feet is a lot of water yeah. and that's a lot of money and that water can be now used somewhere else yeah. so we're really proud of of our technology that we we have embraced at the city to help across the board mm-hmm. 
where the winery is right, you're able to track um, folks coming from Vegas, maybe live yeah. in Fresno. So what do you, what is, you think the percentage of people that are visiting the wineries? You know, we local? see, yeah, most of those are for the most part mm -hmm. out of town and they're right. pretty close. They're usually Bakersfield, okay. Antelope Valley right. travelers, but what we've been able to find, you know, we do have stray leaves, the tasting room yeah. in downtown, but most of the tasting rooms are in the unincorporated mm -hmm. areas. But because the data does show you kind of pre and post mm -hmm. visits, you can tell, well, they may have gone out to, they're from Bakersfield. They may have gone out to Tehachapi Winery, for example. But after Tehachapi Winery, they stopped and got gas at Love's right, right. or Flying J or, you know, go down the list. They, you know, they, they, they spend some money in the city as they get in and out. So there's a big economic impact. And more and more, we're seeing people taking longer trips as that winery list expands. And we've got more and more reasons to spend two days in Tachapi and join the AVA. You can see that data. There's more overnight stays being, it, being developed. The money sticks and then that encourages new investment. And course. then they come back. I mean, right, that's the other right. part. They have a great time. Mm -hmm. They come back, they realize it's an easy trip. Um, we did recently be able to pull data on those kind of uh, overnight stays in the last year. And uh, I helped this as part of the presentation with the Chamber of Commerce with targeted marketing. But you could target what, what zip codes we're visiting here and uh, or at least the MSAs. And so LA, Orange County, and the Inland Empire uh, are big on overnight stays in this in this area. And this is the same kind of data I pulled for, for the renewable in industry to see, hey, we have a lot of folks from Salt Lake City in Virginia. Well, that's AES's headquarters or Clear Eye Energy. Right, you know, their headquarters are here and we're seeing a lot of folks coming in. So you can kind of use that to, to determine the impact of, of really anything. And there are different colors yeah. of money. We have the local right. money, <laughs> yes. we have the regional money, we have the national money, and they require different levels of service, right? right? And right. that money coming into our coffers is helping us fund fire, police, you know, mm -hmm. public safety, our public works, and all those things that this city and this community enjoy. Yeah. And so we understand there's different colors of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we see in terms of overall tax revenue, um, you know, renewables is about six to 7 billion a year. And obviously the, the wind, oh, that money really sticks as well as solar, but um, we have what the, the nation's largest wind project. So it's, it's good to provide that education. Uh, we, we never want subsectors of energy competing, mm -hmm. uh, right? Because we welcome all good cap investment. Uh, but we it's great to show that the impact, we know oil and gas pretty well, yeah. that impact. But, it, you know, in terms of uh, the renewable energy, that's really helpful with the, the moving forward. And the job multiplier effect mm -hmm. as well. I mean, you, when, when I think people talk about jobs, they talk about the hard number of jobs. I mean, you said earlier, hydro store, when it's built, you know, 25 to 50 permanent employees. Right. And that, that's great. But however, you know, that sector, the industrial, the energy sector, their job multiplier three, four mm -hmm. times. So for every that, one job, four more jobs has to feed them, clothe them, house them, uh, and, and provide public services as well. So you see the multiplier because they pay better. Mm -hmm. So they, they're spending more money. And so therefore, the, the demand to kind of meet their needs is met by other jobs. So it really does speak to the true impact of the, of the, of the energy sector because they're big job multipliers in the area. Right. And then after this particular, you know, interactive present, I'm sorry, the powering the future um, right. <laughs> segment, we have uh, keynote conversations with a couple of a uh, couple of individuals. Maybe we could talk about that, Richard. Right. And so, uh, again, uh, just to clarify the beginning, Lorelai is going to give basically uh you know, the future of energy, um, looking at uh, trends, developments, um, you know, um, near and long term future. Uh, but then it will close the conversation with that discussion about the two companies that are really critical, of course, a Chevron CRC, but we have others, uh, you know, that are that are part of that mix. Um, of course, Barry and other, you know, other other uh, key uh, energy companies. And then so they'll talk about, you uh, how, you know, how does carbon capture sequestration, how is that, uh, you know, how will that uh, impact Kern County? Um, That's again, an exciting technology yeah. that is really coming, coming alive. Yeah. yeah. And we're, and we're seeing, we're, we're, as you mentioned, multipliers, we're trying to wrap our arms around, well, how much, what would be the multipliers for these type of technologies? Also, um, you know, in terms of tax revenue, uh, job counts because this again is the area um, that uh, we're gonna we are setting uh, you know the, the course for the future for these type they still have to move through planning and uh, planning commission and board of soups mm -hmm. but uh, we're we are excited about what twenty twenty five holds but also understanding what is the elevator speech right 
I know the elevator speech for oil and gas, for renewable, but we need to have that elevator speech for carbon capture and sequestration mm -hmm. uh, because there are some groups that are opposed to that. And, um, and we need to uh, make sure we communicate the science as well as the economic impact of these uh, types of uh, technology. Education is key. We don't want people right. filling in the blanks with nonsense. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because the AI data can actually <laughs> probably uh, counteract your nonsense these days with uh, hard numbers and facts and figures. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and just, you know, um, we have the world leaders in energy that are the architects of, of these projects. This is not some startup company that says, Hey, I want to do carbon capture. Secret. No, these are the, you know, internationally known, you know, fortune 500 or fortune hundred or 10 companies. And people with money yeah. don't typically invest in losing propositions, right? right? Yes, yeah. right. The, the, the technology is proven. They know what they're doing and they expect a return. Great, great point. Right, right. It has to pencil out. Uh, you know, we have a lot of renewable energy companies, d dozen plus that are, you know, we're working with, but let's just say many of those may not make it to the, um, you know, to the, um, uh, what do you call finish line, right? Sure. What the football analogy would be. The goal, goal line. line. <laughs> um, if I'm the a goal's Dolphins. there, like Vanderbilt, yeah. they take it down and That's throw right. it in Throw it in the river. Throw it in the river. I'm a Dolphins fan. We don't have many touchdowns. <laughs> Field goal. I forgot Field what goal. the goal end zone was called. I haven't been there in so long. <laughs> yeah, we've only, I'm not going there. Did they just take it down? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just not pretty. Um, but yeah, this is the thing. What is the litmus test, right? Because our litmus test for projects is their capital investment, jobs, and tax revenue. Um, there was a lot of money coming, especially from the federal level for renewable energy projects. But uh, the, the beauty of like a, a hydro store is they've secured three to 400 million of Wall Street, right? Wall Street money. Um, you have to have that mix to be successful. In my opinion, you have some, maybe some federal funding. Uh, Natural Cement has uh, up to half a billion for their net zero projects, mm. already an existing operation. So that net zero will create many jobs. But what about these you know companies that have not you know, um, have not broken ground. So we're always very vigilant and vetting these out and seeing, you know, will they have the ability, the stamina, uh, the funding, right, to uh, get get to that level. And that's why we typically showcase technologies that we believe pretty confident, um, you know, have that funding and, and reliability, you know, degree of certainty uh, to be successful. I think it would be hard to find another county in the nation, let alone the state, but in the nation that has obviously we've been doing what we're doing as far as the aerospace industry for, for decades. Um, and what Edwards air force base does and flight testing and everything, everything you see in the military at some point has been flight tested at Edwards air force base. Same with space, mm -hmm. but doing that in, in, in the aerospace yeah. defense thing for years. And then now energy we're into that sector. Now, as far as we're testing yes. kind of this, these new futures, because we have the land, we have the, the planning capabilities, uh, we have the workforce and we're working on more workforce, but I, I would, it'd be it'd be hard to find another county, probably the nation, that's doing all those things and is is testing whether it be in the air or in the ground. You know, we're we're probably the only county in the country right. that's doing I mean, this. I wish we got more, you know, appreciation, right, uh, for what we do. Uh, you know, t t in terms of the energy realm, you said aerospace. I mean, we're number four in STEM jobs in the country. We're the third most diverse economy in the country, Kern County. Yeah. So where else would we all want to be doing practicing economic development? Because typically the public and private sector work in tandem to support these. You're, you're not getting these that type of uh, collaboration, coordination in uh, one county right to the yeah. south. Um, so th um, that's the thing I always say, you know, we should be at the head table when the state di discusses energy policy, not at the children's table, but at the adults table at the head. We, we are the leader, both mm -hmm. in renewable and oil and gas. Well, I mean, well I, said. you know, I was at that the recent B3K, uh, the aerospace defense yeah. cluster meeting uh, down in, in Palmdale. And one of the gentlemen, he was the maintenance. Uh, I want to say he was a. Uh, lieutenant, I could get that wrong, but for Edwards Air Force Base, okay. he kind of made the joke, right? Being the maintenance guy saying the joke at the Air yeah. Force is if it's in the air, maintenance, put it there, right? <laughs> and I thought to myself, well, that extends into Kern County. I mean, if yeah. it's in the, if it's on yeah. the ground or in the air, like Kern County yes. put it there because whether it's being powered by or tested yeah. for the technology of which it came from, 
Kern County had a hand in that and everybody living in Tachapi and so forth had a hand in that. Every time I see something happen in SpaceX or whatever, I right. always think my neighbor probably yeah. designed a piece <laughs> right. of that. You know, the guy that I met at Westlane for a beer over the weekend yeah. was just doing that engine on the rocket. Uh, that, it's crazy to imagine. Was that, that Colonel Brown or it was? No, yes. Like, what yeah, an amazing yeah, person. I, I, I want to get him on the podcast. I know. He was so great. I mean, his intro was amazing. I was telling these guys, he stood up and said, you know, I'm Colonel Brown and, and uh, I'm Zig excited to be here with the greatest people in the greatest country and, and he went on and on for like two minutes and everybody said how do you follow that intro like yeah you, you don't were like, want I'm to follow listen the air force right now man like you inspired me it was you fantastic not want to follow. well that's the point like we have on our website the homepage, you know all these stats about uh, east Kern, right in terms of the first space shuttle landing uh, in terms of obviously edwards mojave first inland uh, commercial port then you go to nasa right flight to, uh, in terms of breaking the speed band yeah. and then rich crash china lake about 50 of the world's first came from there. Mm -hmm. uh, glow stick, um, yeah. <laughs> GPS, right? Uh, as well as, you know, uh, you know, other airbags. Yeah. So, but we are very modest here. And that's the thing that, uh, you know, you all are great ambassadors for your region to Atchipi. How do we make sure that our residents know this? And we should all be proud beating our chest, right? Yeah. What does Kern County do? What well, we say, power, defend, and feed the world, right? We're the number one county in the uh, country for agriculture. Sure. Um, so again, we, you know, um, we just work hard and do our job, but at a certain point, you know, I, hopefully we get the claim that I believe we deserve, not yeah. just from the state, but nationally. Yeah. Well, we'll I think marketing is doing what we do. Yeah, that's for sure. No, marketing is <laughs> a part of that. I think I, I, I presented to a couple economic development organizations a few years ago and it was met with mixed results because, you know, <laughs> statewide oil is, is bad. And I, I thought, where is the, you know, we, we need to have buttons at conferences to say oil still matters, you know, right. that sort of thing <laughs> and make people stop. And because it's so contrary to what the state says, but it, it does and that sort of thing. And so I think, you know, a lot of that's marketing. <laughs> How we yeah. do a better job of showcasing that. Well, and we are, we have, I mean, it's interesting because we have uh, folks from around the country, uh, reporters, uh, PhD students looking, studying the evolution. Yeah. I mean, and some of them, if they come for a couple of days or weeks, that's great because I want somebody to come and see what Kern County is doing versus just flying in. I always say we're a flyover state within a state. No, come to the county and look what's happening in yeah. communities like Tehachapi, um, you know, throughout and, and see the innovation, the you know, just the uh, upward mobility, right? Because we're one of the top places where upward mobility because of these jobs. Yeah, we don't need to be a yeah. flyover county in right. the state anymore because <laughs> Meadows Field is amazing now. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, really, every time I go somewhere, American Airlines, yeah. United, it's so easy to fly in and out of Meadows, right? Yeah. And I, you, you talk about all these energy sectors, right. they fly in and out. It's, it's all the big, it's all the pieces of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you I've know, lost it takes, a couple it takes, of years of my life uh, going to LAX, right. stress my stress level. So you don't have to level. be stressed anymore. Okay. Just fly in and out of meadows. It's so easy. You park yeah. at the front door. Well, I think yeah. to what current and this again, like you said, Richard, like people, we just kind of do our jobs, but you look across the Midwest, you know, in, in, in smaller towns and smaller communities that, that their industry died, textile mills yeah. closed and it was it and then roll up the carpets. And now they're just a, a little map on a, on a, or a little dot on a map. And no one's, no one's there anymore because that was it. All they had were textiles and all they had was maybe farming. And then when it went away, they went away, but we've always, one thing goes away. We're figuring out the next thing, how to figure, you know, make that work. And so we are blessed because of the diversity of the economy to have other areas to focus on and then be on that leading edge of the next piece of technology, whether it's aerospace, you know, even farming, you know, agritourism is now becoming a thing. You know, agritourism is be as more and more people discover the country way of living, so to speak, they're, they, they love agritourism, yeah. you know, that's becoming a thing as well. So we're on that cutting edge, which helps us stay vibrant and then successful long-term. Well, live, work and play. And I, People should come to your monthly uh, Greater Tashree EDC and see that enthusiasm across, you know, both public, private sector, nonprofits. Um, and, and so that's what, you know, that's what people are thirsting for, right? Mm -hmm. This type of environment. Um, but also having the jobs, the quality jobs nearby, which you all do. I mean, you're kind of this epicenter. You have all these economic engines yeah. that you tie into, and that's the great thing about the AI 
uh, component is showing, you know, where we, people live, work and play and spend yeah. money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, and that helps us turn around and deliver those services, whether it's hiring more police officers, paving more roads, that sort of thing. Really. And a lot of it coming from the people that are making deposits and then they're leaving, but then they're yeah. coming back and making more deposits allows us to do more. Yeah. I mean, it's, we're excited about this uh, morning again. We're not over two to three days, but we think this, it's a very uh, dense and, and, and action-packed type content rich uh morning um and so uh yeah I, i'm i i'm really proud of, of our team we have a summit planning uh, committee and 30 plus uh, sponsors including city of tashby and again it's it's a celebration right it's um there's not inflammatory conversation but it's again that celebration of innovation um and uh coordination and to inform and educate people and right. i know maya you're going to be there with yeah. a camera and a microphone and maybe okay. <laughs> allow you know get some interviews with richard and others so that we can continue to help promote the entire county mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and having gone to this event in years past it really is mind-boggling i mean i'm not somebody that is in the realm of right. industry you know energy industry obviously but as somebody that kind of looks at it as well, you know, I pay my utilities and I see the turbines on the hill. Okay. How does energy impact me? Yeah. As we've just discussed, there are so many facets that it really does impact each and every person, especially here in Tehachapi being on the forefront of all the crazy technologies going on out there in East Kern. So, yeah. And it's an say. economic development tool for us as well when it comes to site selectors and someone's looking to considering building a new hotel. Obviously, tourism is going to play a fact in the hotel stays, but... Who's going to stay there? And when they realize that, well, we've got five, six, seven pretty big renewable energy companies who are bringing in 20 plus people a month to stay on average of two nights, they're all about heads and beds. Yep. And so they do that quick math and go, oh yeah, this is going to pencil. Not, not, then we add the, you know, the tourism and that sort of thing is just a cherry on top, but we're able to keep going during the slow time of the week, you know, the Monday through Thursday and then weekends take care of themselves. Well, we have a challenge and opportunity here. Um, we don't have a business journal in our region. So Fresno has a weekly 30 page. And so it really behooves us, which I know you all do a great job of telling the story of business uh, beyond business, but um, you know, residents and businesses and, and a vibrant, um, you know, ecosystem. But, you know, we're proud to help tell the story about our energy industry because we don't have this weekly and where somebody can Google and, and read about the amazing startups in, in you know, Kern County as existing as well as emerging industries. And so it, it makes our job, I guess it's a challenge, but it's an opportunity, which uh, we are, this podcast is a perfect way of telling a story. We use LinkedIn, our e-newsletter, um, but we need to keep, keep because never assume that your neighbor knows what's happening here in terms of our economic vitality and diversity. Yeah. And the diversity has been critical for decades and decades. I mean, I've told the story before, but going to the old city archives, I found articles from the great depression saying how well to <laughs> economy did in the depression because it was diversified. Okay. <laughs> and that was when ag was a huge part, but you know, it was, we still had other industries around uh, and the diversity, although they've changed, but right. that, that, that was a big part of it. And it continues today when just these more futuristic, uh, you know, it's, sectors that are around us. Well, we guided ourselves through the recession and then we mm -hmm. guided ourselves through COVID and so many communities around us failed. And, uh, you know, we, we don't want them to fail. We need them to be healthy. And people come to the city of Tashby. Sometimes it works for us. Sometimes it doesn't, but we help guide them to where they need to be. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, there is a discussion about essential jobs. And so come moving into COVID, um, I look like we were one of the best places. So about 67% of our jobs were considered essential. So think about it, government, aerospace, mm -hmm. um, energy, Medical. logistics, uh, healthcare, mm -hmm. ag, uh, and, and acro across the board. And so again, um, that that's the thing about how are you immune to the ups and downs? Maybe one sector is declining, but you have three or four others that bolster that. I don't think Hollywood has recovered yet no, from no, COVID. No, no I mean, there's yeah, shuttered the studios, studios have moved yeah. uh, completely out of state, yeah. sometimes out of country. No, it's becoming an issue is that there are shuttered studios and more so with tax benefits in places like Georgia and whatnot with, uh, with oh, the way right. they film. They'll but Hollywood has struggled. You and know, we're and that's we're importing economy. too many things still. You're talking about oil and gas being imported, but microchips, all those th certain things, you know, the world economy, the world politics, you know, we're on the verge of something seems like every moment of every day 
and we're importing all of these essentials. And if we could build more of them in Kern County, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, logis- where the logistics, um, you know, advanced manufacturing, you name it. And that, that's the main, the beauty of our economy. Um, is that we have that, that, you know, we have the elements uh, for sustainability that I don't see in a lot of counties on um, West Coast throughout the country. Yeah, and other counties are trying to recruit that stuff to them. Other states are trying to recruit that to them, and we already have it here. It's just right. a matter of, of fostering that and making it make sure it expands here. And retention, which I know you've dealt with a lot, uh, I feel more and more like the young people are starting to consider sticking around. Right. Yeah. Uh, just I was in a meeting in Tatchby High School in the Career Technical Education Group, and the programs that they have uh, dealing with engineering and renewables and all this stuff down the line, I was blown away. Like I was considering taking like wood shop in high school, and now these kids are taking advanced engineering classes, right, and, right. And, and aerospace, <laughs> and and all kinds of stuff, and forest management. You name it, they've got all these options for the industries around us, and they're working very well with Saracosa Community College too. And so I'm I'm excited about the potential of these kids sticking around. And not because that's where the jobs are at. They're not going to leave to go work, you know, in renewable energy somewhere else for the most part, because a lot of it's happening. here. Well, and, you know, we 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 talk about this the Z generation They're They're motivated by lifestyle, not career. So if you keep saying, hey, you needed this career, they kind of shut you down. But if you say, OK, what lifestyle would you like? Yeah. Oh, you want to have your own house, your pool. Well, where can you ha- have that ability? with the STEM job in Kern, you can. And, you know, shout out to the Kern uh, County Superintendent Schools on November 7th. They have their East Kern uh, Career Expo at uh, in Mojave at Stewart Center. Mm-hmm. So that's great having just down the road from you all with yeah. over a thousand kids seeing mm-hmm. the opportunities. Because business, we need to promote um, to these students what options they have. It, otherwise, it'll be too late if, you know, they have their diploma or what have you. Uh, they're envisioning living on the beach, right? And in LA where they might be with six people and working three jobs, just yeah. have that lifestyle. That, that's honestly why I moved back to Kern <laughs> County out of college in, in San Diego, loved yeah. it there. But then I'm like, I'm living with five other people. Yeah, right. I can't, I can't, I don't want to do live with five other people anymore. <laughs> like I'm going back home where I, you know, I can live by myself, you know, and that, that was a motivator right. to, to get out because yeah, it's all, it's nice, but the reality is it doesn't work. And now with the career sectors we have available, there's so many opportunities opportunities out there for, for younger Yeah, and, and these employers, the high-level STEM jobs are unfilled. Yeah. So it's much easier to have – talent retention is, is easier, right, hopefully, than attraction. And so these kids, you can write the career pathways, you guide them, they can sink right into the these upper to mid-level STEM jobs that are sitting yeah. vacant as we speak. And, and, the, and the education uh, world has changed slightly, too, uh, to where, yes, there's still a place for the four-year university right out of high school. I'm going mm-hmm. to the four-year – but so many now these these job training programs will say, hey, get on with us right out of high school. We'll pay for your yes, night right. classes at Saracosa. We'll get you trained up as you make money and you get experience and then you're trained and you're educated and then you can go wherever you'd like at that point or stick with us for even more upward mobility. So the fact that they're seeing that and they're incorporating the education piece into that now uh, is important and they're just kind of changing the way we think about about college. Too. Well, internships and uh, you, as you know, we won our, our foundation, we won an international EDC award as well as CalEd for our uh, internship called Kit Current Interconnections, where these students right out of high school um, had plugged them into mainly local manufacturers for paid internships, eight weeks. A majority of them were offered full-time jobs mm-hmm. after an eight weeks. So they can decide, do I go back, to, you know, can I go to back to school as well as work? Or maybe I just start today. So what better, what better to give them that opportunity? And so again, paid internships, in my opinion, are the number, and we've seen the data, number one attribute that employers are looking for. Kern County is yeah. full of endless opportunities. Mm-hmm. Endless opportunities hey, for business. That's there you go. There you go. <laughs> Somebody coined that, I guess. That's right. That's right. I'm looking forward to the Energy Summit. It's only four hours. You're packing in yep. a lot, that's yep. for sure. But literally, Kern, you know, we've talked about oil, gas, ag, renewables, mining, aerospace. You know, we're very blessed. Yes. And we continue to push the envelope to be better at what we do so that we can feed, fuel, and what was the other piece? Protect. Uh, defend. Protect, defend. you know, the world. And so super excited. Future's about so working, bright. You got to wear shades, right? There you go. Corey Hart. <laughs> okay. Was it Corey Hart? Uh, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Maya's looking at the He's glazed like, over oh, look. She's like, oh. She's like I have no idea. That, that, yeah. These older hey, gentlemen are talking the about. The 80s defined us. <laughs> Just saying. The 80s defined us. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Uh, so it's October 24th. 
I guess I better get prepared, huh? Um, <laughs> at <laughs> at uh, yeah, the Baker's don't make Marriott, us look bad, Gordon. Yeah. At the convention center, yeah. I'll, you know, I'll just wing it. It works out better oh, that way. It's like a no. podcast. Oh uh, no, no, no. We're we're prepared. Don't worry. Uh, and so, yeah, excited on that. And you have a few tickets available. We do. I think we're a couple dozen available at kernec.com. And I only play sold out yeah. rooms. Okay, I'm well, just saying. You know, wait. if it ain't sold out, you're gonna scratch me out there. We, we did see an uptick when you were announced oh, on the marquee. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Thanks, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Greg. He bought yeah. two tables, I yeah. think, probably. We got yeah. groupies, I hear. And <laughs> we'll be there staying overnight. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, it's going to be a great event. Yeah. Anything else in closing? I think we hit. I think we did, Richard. Thank you for coming Absolutely. up today. Yes, we appreciate you. you driving no, up the hill. I always and love it. Doing this in person. It's beautiful up here. Thanks for all you do for our region. Yeah, no doubt. Absolutely. Well, if anybody's listening has any questions or comments on this topic or really anything, you can email us media at tatchbucityhall.com and we will get that addressed. Maybe send it out to Richard for him to answer. Um, but as always, guys, thanks so much for your time and everybody listening in. Thanks for listening. And we'll catch you back here next time on Tatch Pod. Yeah.